Hi everyone, my name is Jorge Valenzuela. I'm a former graduate student from Texas A&M University, and I'm a currently co-reader at Bayer Crop Science. In this module about QTL mapping, I'll give you a quick tutorial about how to use a software that was pretty useful for me when I was conducting my PhD research. This software name is UCI, uh, QTL ICI mapping and was developed by Meng and collaborators in 2015. And I will walk you through the different functionalities and some of the analysis that you can perform with it so you can apply it for your own research. So this is a software main screen. Here you can see all the different functionalities that you can take advantage of with this software. But for today, I'll give you a walk you through three of the functions and give you some examples of how to perform the analysis. The first function that I will present to you will be the beam function, which is used for remove redundant markers, the map function, which is used to make the linkage maps in my parental populations, and the beep function, the one that is used for the QTL analysis. So let's start by creating a project. Here we will set the project name, which in this case I will call it tutorial, and then we will say the path or directory where this project will be saved. In this case, it will be saved if my heart is right. Then after creating the project, a new screen will come out in which, in which you can select the analysis you want to perform. So here we will select the bin function, right? After clicking it, you will get the example files that come with the software. Uh, in this case, we have three different types, which is the bin file and some other Excel types. My recommendation is when you're about to run your own analysis, use those examples as a template and you would adapt them to your particular analysis, especially the ones that are for Excel. But for this case, regarding, regardless of which one are you going to use, all of them will, will work. So it takes a while to run it. Okay, after it's loaded, you will click this folder, the bin folder, and all the information you have loaded will show up. The marker ID column is generated by the software and it counts the markers that you have loaded. The next one is the marker name. It, in this case, I name as M1 and M2 and you can name it as you want. And the third one is the anchor column and for which I will talk a little bit more in details. And the next one is the frequency in percentage of how that marker is missing, in the, is missing in the population. In the case of the parameters, we set the numbers of markers deleted that will be deleted based on the missing rate or the segregation distortion. The next one is the one that I, was, I said I was going to talk about. And we will use an example of it. Uh, for example, let's say here we have all markers set as zero. That means like all markers are not anchored at all, anchored at all right? But let's say we have marker one, M1 to M10 as anchor one, and M11 to M20 as anchor two. Here we're saying to, we're telling to the software that they should be grouped together and therefore they will be in the same linkage group. The next one, uh, the instruction is pretty clear. We're saying that if it is selected, we select this, we click this part uh, here. Missing values are used, resulting in two markers at the same position in a map construction. If not, non-redundant markers might be not in one B. And here, what we're doing, we have we are deleting by redundancy or we can remove them by random. What I would like, I would recommend you is to remove markers based on, on the number of missing values. When let's say we are comparing two markers and the software will remove, I mean, if they're consistent across population with the same alleles, it will remove the one that has, is not that much distributed in the population. So let's do B.
So let's click here and let's see the results. Here in the summary, we see the outcome where the markers were being dependent on similar, the similarity and were either remove or, remove or maintain. There's a clear example here in markers three and four. As you see here, they were set in the same beam, beam number three, but then but one marker was deleted, marker number three, based on number, the, because it has a higher frequency of missing, missing marker, it is missing a larger number of the population, right? Compared to number four. And here in the map, we can see that we ended up with a total of 889 markers, where we initially started in a total of 2,378, 2, which means that we ended up with a 37% of markers over, of the renal markers data set. So after we have removed the redundant markers, the next step is to create the linkage maps. Sorry, I have done it, but they say, I will show you the, the steps. You will click open and then select the function, the map function, and the software will automatically show you open, show you open uh, a screen where you can take the examples files that they have created. But what you're gonna do is go to the same directory where you save your project and open the new file, the, the map file that was created in the previous step. As I say, I'm overwriting it because uh, I tried before. So here you will see, we'll see that all the markers in the same order as, as they were named in the previous one. The anchor, which in this case we haven't anchored them, all of them are not assigned to a specific group or they are not uh, grouped together or clustered together. Uh, the same here, we do not have any of group or chromosome that we know in advance how they were be arranged. For this column, we have uh, the number of markers that are similar as parent one. For example, for M2, we have 103 markers that have the same allele as parent one. In this case, parent one is A, whereas parent B, uh, two is B. For the next one, we, we have uh, represents the number of lines as F1s, which in this case is zero. And the next one is the number of lines as parent two, right? This, this is the opposite of the other one. Then we have the number of markers in segregation distortion and uh, some statistics regarding this, uh, the segregation distortion. And the first part of the parameters we see how the, we will arrange or sort the markers. For example, we can uh, sort them based on the logarithm of the odds or LOD, which declares the relationship between the two markers. Or we can do it based on the recombination frequencies. And as in this manual say, any two markers with an estimated recombination frequency, then a smaller than a threshold, in this case is 0.3, will be grouped together. The same for LOD, right? So it, was, it will tell you the relationship between those two markers. And you can also do based on recombination and so forth for the centimorgan. So let's do grouping. So it will take a while. So after we have grouped all the markers, we will have this outcome in the right side. The software have arranged them based on, or clustered together or grouped them together based on the LOD score of three or associated based on recombination event between them. So here we can see that in group one or in group one, market two, seven, eight, and nine, and 11 are placed together. But now what we're gonna do is to order them. In this case, we have multiple different uh, algorithms and I will strongly recommend you to read the manual in order to understand which one is the, be the best one for you. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll go with 
um, default settings. So the ordering step is a little bit like less time consuming compared to the other one. So now we have the markers sorted according to the genetical position, right? Here we see that in linkage map one, we don't have the same one as they were previously, uh, with the same markers that they were previously located, right? Or placed. Here we have marker 373, it, uh, 1446 next to it, to it, and so forth. Sometimes you know the physical position of the marker. Let's say marker one, two, and three. You know that they are the beginning of the chromosome according to the physical position. But in your linkage map, the software might arrange it, arrange it to you in a different way and place it at the end. So what I would recommend you to do is just to reverse the linkage group and that's it. So after we have ordered them, the next step is rippling, which according to the manual is something like fine tuning the mapping, the, the, the markers and the linkage maps. And the same as, as the, this step, you can use the LOD score recombination or the, or the different the distances between them in order to fine tune these linkage maps. Lastly, you will, you have the option to select which output do you want. What I will recommend you to do is to get all three, all, all of them, all four, and then they will come and show in your left side of the screen once it's done. Okay, so now we will open the, we will have all multiple output files that we have requested. For me, the more meaningful are the summary and the bit file. The summary will show you all the details from this population, the chromosome, uh, where they are, well, the, the first chromosome where they were sorted, right? The chromosome one, which is the first linkage group, the first marker in that linkage group, and the interval in centimorgans. But I think it's better to explain this in this bit file, which is the one that you will use for the next step. Here you can see all the description for your population. This is a mapping population. It is a type three population. You will need to look at the manual to see what all the different types of populations. We have like 20. In this case, we have a recovery red lines. Uh, the mapping function was used to sampling markers, space times for intervals. And the most important and what we want to know here is how many link, uh, linkage maps were created. In this case, for the markers that we have in the previous step, we created uh, two, 12 new linkage groups or chromosomes. Uh, there is no rule saying that every chromosome will be a linkage group. You, have, you can have multiple linkage groups for chromosomes and you will need to decide that based it on the length of your linkage maps or your linkage group. And here you have the number of individuals per population. Here we can see that in chromosome one, we have 319 markers. In chromosome two or linkage group two, we had 124 and so on. For chromosome one, we can see that the first marker in the genetic position is marker 376. This next marker is Marker 1446 and is 1.33 centimorgans apart from the first marker, and so forth. You can keep scrolling down. And lastly, you will see, sorry, in a third part, you will see the markers sorted in the same way as they are in the linkage maps. So you have marker 376. And the allele call, allele call for the first marker, which in this case B is pair two and A is pair one, right? And the same for the next marker. At the end of this file, you will see, you will have a part where you would add the phenotypic data, which in this case, for this example of this population, 
that was used, we don't have it. And for the next step, which is calculate the or calculate or perform the QTL analysis, I will use another example and we will stop with this population. So let's open a V file which is in the example. So let's click and open, select the beam, beam function, sorry. And then we will select one example. Uh, in this case, I will select the DHS, the WDH example. So let's click it and open it. So here we can see this is a new population and, and here's the description. We have uh, this population type is three, which is a double haploid. We have 21 linkage groups, which in this case, we have a similar number of linkage groups as chromosomes and the population size is 159. This time we have an extra row, which is for the number of trees that are going to be analyzed in this case is four. And then we see, when we scroll down, we see all the markers that are a group or linkage group, right? And for chromosome one, we have 22 markers. For chromosome one B, we have 21 and so forth. If we keep scrolling down, we will see them all markers are in chromosome one and how they are arranged in centimorgans in the linkage group. So let's keep moving down. And we will see you later. Okay, let me go faster. Here we will see all the markers. Sorry, the allele calls for all the markers, right? For marker number one, we have a zero for the first line, minus one for the next marker. So for the next line, a zero for the next line, and a two for us for another line. So here, as you can see, the codes for the list have changed. In this case, parent one is number two. And we have a zero that means it's parent number two. Uh, minus one is, is when we don't have a, a marker. And we have a terocygos, which is, does not apply for this DH population. It will be a one. And regardless of the code that you use, it doesn't matter, it will not affect the analysis, obviously, but make sure you're being consistent in the in the way you're calling the alleles in, in this is when you're setting all the, the markers information, right? And then when we scroll down, we will see a new information that we didn't see before. Here we have the four traits, which in this case is T8, T11, and T15, and the next one, the old, sorry, or the last one will be T19. And here we can see the phenotypic values for each of the lines, right? For, let's say for the first trait, line number one has a phenotypic value or 114. The second one has a missing value. And the third one is 112. For the second trait, which is T11, the first line one has 117.5, whatever the trait is. Uh, the second line has 100 a value of 108.58 and so forth. So let's go down and look at the parameters that we will play with. So we have two ways to handle missing phenotypes. One will be by deletion. So that means that that line would not be considered for that analysis because it has a missing value. And mean replacement, which means that, that if we have a missing an A here, that value will be changed and will be replaced with a mean value for the population. Obviously, I will recommend you always the first one. For the, in this part, we can select the, the parameter, or sorry, the mapping method that we will use. So we can select between single marker analysis, interval mapping with additive effects, additive and dominant effects, effects inclusive composite interval mapping for additive and dominant effects, um, selective genotyping method. It, and then we have interval mapping for epistatic interaction, sorry, for, for epistatic effects or QTLs and inclusive composite interval mapping for epistatic effects. Here we can, uh, we can select 
the, the steps, the sentry model, which is, as the name say, will be the steps in the scanning that we will look at the analysis in sentimorgans, like how the, the, the software will look of positions across the linkage groups, right? We will scan by one sentimorgan, and we have the probability for the stepwise regression. In terms of setting the parameters for the significance of QTL, we have two options. We can manually uh, modify or change the, the, the LOD score for calling a QTL significant, which could be three or 2.5, depending on how stringent you want to do, be with the analysis. Or what I will do is use a permutation test, which in this case will, this case will run uh, 1000 permutations, and this is type one error, so 0 0.05, right? So here we have selected method, we have set all the parameters, and the next step will be to click run, well, start, right? So I will start analysis, and I will recommend you to, to stand up, walk for a little bit, because this might take, might take a while. So this is how it looks like after the analysis has finished. So we click in the BIP folder, we open it, and then we go to the results. In order to see what you have get from your QTL analysis, you will click the QIC uh, file. And here you will see all the QTLs that you found uh, to be significant for all your trades. So here we say for trade number one, which is a T8, we have a QTL in chromosome 11 and a position of 56 uh, centimorgans. And here you have your left marker, your right marker. So these are the markers that are neighboring, neighboring your QTL. And the first QTL explains up to 23%, 23.49% of your phenotypic variation. Uh, in this case, you have an additive effect, which is negative, meaning that your, your QTLs comes, is donated or inherited in the population from the parent number one. And it has an effect of 8.65, right? I don't know what are the units that were used for this trade, but it is 8.65. For the second trade, we have a QTL also located in chromosome one. It is the same physical position as the previous one and the same flanking markers. So that means that this second QTL was found within the same region and affects both, straight, both traits, sorry. So that means that there are multiple uh, QTLs or genes within these two flanking markers, or there's a gene that has a pleiotropic effect on two different traits. For the second trade, we have another QT on chromosome 13. For the, uh, the trade number 15, we have a QT on chromosome 6, as well as in 11. And for the last trade, we have a QT on chromosome 6, and also in 11. As you can see, this QTL, which was, which was detected for, for the first, was detected for first trade, the second, the third, and the fourth one. So that means that it will be really important uh, or a QTL or region you, you might want to look more in detail for your, for your analysis or your populations. So there are some other nice things that you can do with here with this software. For example, we can click in map and we will see something similar ours while we were looking at the, at the linkage group with a map function. And, but here, we, what we're gonna see is we can select the LOD score and the QTLs, and you will see this figure, and we will have this horizontal line, which has the LOD score, and you will see the significance of the QTLs or some markers affecting traits uh, most of them are not significant, but let's go to chromosome 11, which is the one that has a QTL with pleiotropic effect for 
all traits that were analyzed. And here we can see that each color represents a different trait and all of them are within the same region, right? Here we, here's where we have the, the pleiotropic QTL. And we, I think you can filter for markers and or you can zoom in as I showed previously. Unfortunately, I don't know how to change colors. I don't know if that's possible, but the, this figure is good enough and will give you a good representation of what is happening in your population if you want to present what where the QDLs are located. And also you can see it as an, something similar with uh, the with the LOD. So let's go to the same QTL. So let's select all trades and then go to 11. Okay, I think here we have only one trade. So let's select all trades, right? Similarly as the previous one, we have all the peaks uh, within the flanking markers for the QTL. Right, it's pretty similar to the previous one, but instead of having uh, the peaks in a horizontal way, they're vertical. But here we can see also the additive effect. This is pretty nice because sometimes uh, some QTLs that are pleiotropic for one trade have a positive effect or negative effect, sorry, positive effect from one parent, and but also for the other parent, right? For both parents contributing. And, but here we can see that for all traits, same parent is, it is affecting the kitty, oh, sorry, the, the traits, sorry. The allele donated from one parent is affecting the four traits, something as we saw previously in the table. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, I will appreciate uh, all your questions. I'll be happy to answer them and I would like to to thank, uh, thank you for listening to me today and also thank all the organizing committee for inviting me. And as I said, I will be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you so much. However, before we move to the QTL analysis, I want to show you a figure in which you can see all the linkage groups. So what we're gonna do is just click this map icon and then all the linkage maps, or in this case, chromosome that we had created in the previous step will appear a new screen. Here we can see from chromosome one to seven. And if we scroll down, we will see the remaining ones from eight to 12. Here we can also add, well, we can play around with this figure and add the marker name, as well as the physical position. In some regions when we don't have uh, where the markers are not that much saturated, we can see them like more clear, but there are some parts of the linkage map where it's too, too dense and it, it is not, the figure is not that pretty. Also what we can do here is just zoom in by increasing the, the chromosome width, right? And see more in details, all the linkage groups. Here in this example, we have a chromosome, which is a chromosome number four in which only one marker was uh, grouped. And you can keep it there. It will not make any problem for you, but my recommendation is to remove it. So it will not, have, it will not make more computational complicated or, but it, it doesn't matter. It will not make any difference. So, this is what we have with the linkage maps. And the next step, as I say, will be the QTN analysis. So let's move on.